Now, the macro recorder is great. We saw just how quickly you can record a series of commands, such as formatting and entering data, and then you could turn around and rerun that recording, that macro, and have it perform those same steps again. Now, it's great, but what if you make a mistake during the recording? Right? Maybe I misspelled something, right? Like expense. I'm pretty sure I spelled that right. But maybe I wanted to say expenses or expense type, or type of expense or something different. Or maybe now I want it to be the full months rather than the abbreviated, right? Whatever it might be. Or I want to include the year inside there, right? January 2022, you know, wh whatever. I need to make an edit to the macro. Well, how do we do that? Well, here we're going to get our first peek at Excel VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. Now, this is going to take us into the recording where Excel wrote down everything that you recorded. Literally, we're just going to see a bunch of text, uh, essentially commands that we performed while we were recording this. And we can make edits to that VBA. So we'll jump in there and we'll take a look at how we can make these edits. I'm still on the same workbook, the run with macro worksheet, really doesn't matter which worksheet, but make sure you have your example file open and you've recorded your macro. So now to see the VBA, I'm gonna to go to my developer tab and back into that code section that we referenced earlier, there's an option for Visual Basic. So I'll give that a click. This is gonna open up our VBA window. I'm just going to maximize it, make it full screen here. Now, yours might look a little bit different. You may not have the immediate window. I'll just close that. If you got it, great. You can leave it, but you may not have it. I've got the VBA project window open. You may also have the property panel down below. You may have things open, or maybe you don't have them open. Maybe I'll close this as well. Maybe your window looks something like this, just a big gray box. Whatever the case, we can go up to our View tab, top of the screen, and we wanna make sure that we have the Project Explorer open. Make sure you got at least that one. In the View menu, Project Explorer. Now, inside of there, you've also got the Immediate window. That's what I closed earlier. And some of you might have the Properties window open as well. Here's my Properties window. But make sure you have at least the Project panel, the Project window open. So inside of here, you can see that I've got two projects. I've got one for Solver. This is an add-in. This is something that I activated earlier on in this course. If you took part in the Solver lecture, then you probably have this as well. If you did not activate the Solver or maybe you deactivated it, uh, you will not have it inside your project panel. Ignore it. We're going to leave it alone. We don't want to work inside that one. That's specific to Excel and the Solver tool. We really don't want to mess around with anything there. Uh, right below that, or maybe the only thing you got there, is the VBA project for your active workbook, the inserting and formatting text document. Now, I want to make sure that I have that expanded out. Got this little collapse um, and maximize uh, plus sign and minus sign there. And inside of there, we have a folder called modules. I'll expand that. And we've got a single module in there. Now, modules, all this is, it's just a term for where you're going to store or where your macros are stored. So I'm going to give the module one a double click. This will open up that module. And here is my macro or my sub procedure in VBA. Now, you can see it's just a bunch of text, but this is where Excel wrote down all the notes about what you did as you were recording. You can see here the very first line, it's a sub procedure. We'll talk more about that distinction later on. And then you got the name of your macro there, add format headers. And then down below, you've got all the commands that Excel recorded as you were going through the recording process. The first few lines, they're green lines. They all start with a single uh, apostrophe. These are comments. These aren't commands. They don't do anything for the macro. They don't do anything when you run it. They're just there for us to read. They're the descriptive notes. They're comments left behind by us to help remind us what the macro does and so on. 
So you can see here that I've got my little comment that we set up earlier. We got our keyboard shortcut just reminding us that, hey, control L was your shortcut key. And then down below, I've got all the commands. Now, if you scroll through this, yours might look a little bit different than mine. And if it looks exactly the same, good job. Uh, but probably looks a little bit different just depending on what steps you took as you were recording. You can see my very first line here, I actually don't need it. But I remember when I first started recording, my screen was a little bit up. So there was a couple empty rows up above that I didn't see. So I quickly used my mouse, middle mouse wheel to scroll up. So you can see here that active window dot small scroll and it went down minus two. So I scrolled up to get to the top, but it shifted it up minus two up or they're saying down. Yeah. Okay. So I, it did a little bit of scroll, but I don't need that. That really doesn't do anything for my macro. So to edit it, I can delete that line. I don't need it gone. Okay. Uh, the next thing it did, range A3. We'll talk more about the range object as we continue through this portion of the course, all about VBA. But you can see here that it's essentially getting cell A3 or range A3 dot, and then it's selecting it. So we've got this object, in this case, a cell range A3 dot, the dot then gives us access to what we can do with that object or with that element. In this case, get cell A3, range A3, and then select it. Just two little parts there. What are you working with, right? What's the object? What's the element? And then what are you going to do to it? Okay. Here's the object dot, select it, range A3, select it. And then the next thing, active cell. Well, what's the active cell? The active cell right above, it's A3. We selected that cell. So active cell dot formula R1C1. This is a, a fancy way of essentially saying the value of that cell. And then we're going to make it equal to region. So you can scroll through here. You can glance through it, kind of pick it apart. Some of it you're going to, oh, yeah, I know exactly what that does. Some of it might be a little more abstract. But like I said, we're going to talk about all of this as we continue through this portion of the course. So, but here we can make edits. So I mentioned earlier, maybe instead of expense, I want it to be called expense type. Okay, cool. Or expenses and whatever. I can make the adjustment. You misspell something, you can edit it right here. Uh, let's see. I can keep looking through. I got a lot of formatting stuff going on here. Um, changing the font, changing the background colors and so on. Down at the bottom, down at the bottom, Ooh, wrong button. There we go. These two little lines are right here. What's happening here? What's happening? We got the range object, right? Range, and then it's gonna specify a specific set of cells or a specific range. So here we're saying range C4 to F17. And then what are we doing? We're selecting it. Well, what's happening next? The very next line there, right, right here, is formatting that range of cells. Do you see a problem with that? Is our data always going to be C4 to F17, right? If I get back out of here for a moment, let's move that off my screen. What if my data, the, when I record it, it was C4 to F17, but then later on, maybe I got the North records, which is C4 down to F200. Well, our macro, it specifically calls out that range of cells, C4 to F17, so it will always do that group of cells. Let's take a look. I'm just going to clear this off. You could try this out if you'd like to, or you can just sit back and watch me kill it here. I'm going to clear all. I'll grab this data, then I'm going to clear the formats. And just for fun, I'm going to grab a few rows here, copy them, paste them down below. So like I mentioned, you could try this out with me. You could try it out on your own, or you can just sit back and watch what happens here. Like I mentioned earlier, the macro recorder is great. Love it. It's going to save you so much time. And now the ability to make edits to the macro, such as changing the header, 
uh, deleting perhaps stuff you didn't need, maybe changing some of the formatting, you could do it all right here. But the macro recorder can be quite literal. We're formatting just this area right here. What about larger data sets? What's going to happen? Well, if I come out, I'm going to hit one of my little buttons here. Whoop, done. Sort of, sort of, sort of done. Well, I've got my headers there. Look at that expense type got updated, golden. But I look down here and it's still just this range of cells. It completely ignored that. So I could, if I get that window back here, I could go in and say, well, now it's not C4 to F17. Now it's all the way down to F23. Let's change both of those there. I actually don't really even need the second one. I can delete that out. Don't need it. It's just selected again after it did the formatting. So let's move that off. And now if I just rerun it, I'm not going to clear it like I did before. Whoop, done. And it's now got the formatting all the way down. Very cool. So I can make the edits there. But if I want to make it more dynamic, right? I want to make it so it knows, it knows how big the data is. Then there's a bit more editing. And that's something we're going to get into as we continue through this course. We'll see how to make edits in here. This will, this will become more familiar and understandable as we continue through this next few sections of the course. So try this out. Make an edit, whatever that is. You can adjust one of the headers. You can adjust the range there. Whatever feel you feel like you want to try out there. But try something out. Get a feel for the VBA window and looking at the code. All right. Jump in there and get ready for some exciting mo moments up ahead.